What's up, guys? Welcome back. Um, I was I was on the fence about this. I I told some things, but this is Evil Dead Rise. Uh, it's on Max. It has audio description, and I had like different thoughts in my mind. I was like, this is not really something I want to watch. Uh, I I also kind of was in that spot where I was like, do I review the other films? But the other films don't have audio description. So I'm sort of in this weird place where I can't go back to the beginning because the original Evil Dead doesn't have... It's on Max, just doesn't have audio description. So uh, watching those films without audio description just kind of doesn't make any, any sense. I've seen Army of Darkness. I have not seen the first two. Sorry, sports fans. Uh, and I didn't see the remake. So my contact with the Evil Dead franchise is limited basically to Army of Darkness, which means it's kind of awesome because that movie was awesome. And uh, just the chainsaw and everything, when, when, when taken out of context, Army of Darkness is still a great movie. So, um, but completely unlike everything else in the franchise. This film makes absolutely no fucking sense. I know people love it. It makes absolutely no fucking sense. Um, there were many times in this film where I was doing that horror movie thing where you're like, come on now. Have you ever seen a horror movie? Do people in horror films live in, in worlds in which none of them have ever seen a scary movie before in their life? Because in this, in this one, they directly reference, there's this kid with the ponytail who's like, I'm hosting Friday the 13th festival in my, my apartment do you want to come see and i'm like okay so there are horror films and me meanwhile like none of them none of them have any sort of uh survival instinct there's no real explanation to anything that happens in this film um a lot of things just kind of happen yeah uh it's pretty easy to you you sit there and you're like mm, i would not make that choice um <laughs> The film opens at the beginning with people who are not the main characters. It has an opening scene sort of kill sequence. And, um, yeah, I'll tell you that. I won't tell you how it happens, but there's definitely a, there's a, definitely a part in the film where uh, there's the person who's the deadite who... Uh, I'm also familiar with Evil Dead the Musical, so I know pretty much all of the, uh, the lingo. I know weird... I, my contact with this franchise is very weird, I will admit that, but, um, she's on, there's, uh, the ones that is dead, that is evil dead, <laughs> speaking, and what's going on is weird, and the girl that's there that's watching this, she knows it's weird, she knows something's up, and then the, the girl starts speaking in that weird sort of clearly possessed voice, and for some reason, this girl's like, I'm going to get closer. I'm like, I'm going to get the fuck out of the room is what I'm going <laughs> to do. I'm like, even if it was somebody I knew, even if it was in real life, if somebody started speaking in, in this weird, echoey, sort of, like, possessed voice sound, I'd be out. I would be gone. I'd be like, nope. But for some reason, people, she, she's like, what? Are you okay? <laughs> like, no, she's not okay. Get the fuck out of the room. What are you doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, it's full of things like that. It just really is full of moments where you're just like, do these people? Their point, they're, it, it stars sort of this family. Basically, your, your lead is uh, the aunt to this family. She's uh, off doing her thing. She just finds out she's pregnant. She's peeing on a stick when we meet her. And uh, she's like, ah, shit, you know. So she flies home and she's, her sister lives in an apartment. She's got three kids. Uh, there's uh, two older kids who are like functional levels to be in a horror movie. And there's like a little kid who is, we're introduced to her when she's cutting the heads off of dolls. Um, I legit thought that was, I, I, I told somebody this too. Like I knew somebody who saw Evil Dead Rise and, like, while I was watching this, uh, I messaged them, and I was like, this girl dies, right? I mean, this is, like, a... The the whole clippers and having her head cut off, the, the, having cutting the heads off of her dolls was just, like... Like, they're just going to mirror that in the film, right? I mean, 
It has to. <laughs> like, why would why would the creepy little girl that? <laughs> why is that there? Otherwise, anyway. So this girl's creepy. The little creepy girl. Um, and then there's older sister who likes tattoos, and the older boy who is a pain in the ass. Um, and a mom who doesn't know any of her kids suck. Uh, <laughs> she's just oblivious. They're, they've gone through a divorce recently. Man, the husband, the man is gone. He left all of his shit, but he's gone. Very sketchy. Uh, they're like, oh, his clothes are here. Um, yeah, he's just... Who knows? Who knows where he went? Uh, maybe that's a, maybe that's the prequel sequel uh, that we'll get is... What would actually happen to the husband? Um, they live in this apartment that is literally about to be destroyed demolished it's been like condemned and it's going to be they all have like a certain amount of time to move out so there aren't that many people that still live within the building um but she's got a couple neighbors so you will meet in addition to the five main characters that i have you will meet four people who are clearly meant to die <laughs> there is i'm not even this is not a spoiler if you've ever watched a horror movie before and you think any of those four characters who have i don't even think one of them speaks i don't think the little kid speaks i, I don't think he spoke so um yeah if you think any of those side characters are going to be the hero and like make it to the end and um, sort of out survive the family you were sorely mistaken. Um, that's not what this is for. This is a movie about this family trying to survive when uh, there's an earthquake. Uh, the for in, unexpectedly, there's this massive fucking earthquake that creates cracks in the ground and and bursts open this old vault, where of course the older boy he finds the Necronomicon, he finds the Book of the Dead. <laughs> And it's just, it's, uh, this, they live in an apartment building that used to be a bank, which conceptually I was kind of thrown. I was, I was trying to think of banks that I had been to where I was like, could this also be an apartment building? I'm thinking it must be like downtown in a major city where you would have a high rise bank building because most banks are just one story. And I, I, I didn't, I can, I don't understand it otherwise. But yes, there used to be a bank and there used to be a vault and he, in this, in his everlasting wisdom, goes down there and he finds this creepy fucking book and some records. And so yes, of course, he must read the book and he must play the records because otherwise this film would not move forward. Um, and one of the weird things is, so he does this and you would think that the kid responsible for reading the Necronomicon would be the one who would be chosen. That's not what happens. Uh, these are spoilers, but these are all pretty much, I think, well-known spoilers. These are, this is what, what I can tell you every review I saw of Evil Dead Rise up until this point reveals the fact that the mother, uh, because she's shown in the trailer when you see her and she's like, mommy's with the maggots now, which is a great line in the film, by the way. Um, she's the one who, uh, has this experience. I'll just call it an experience. She has an experience. It's unexplained why her. <laughs> it's unexplained how, like, she just kind of has this horrific shit happen to her and, and, uh, ends up changing uh, for the worse. Um, a lot of people have praised her performance. I guess it's because of the commitment to the performance, you know? Um, but I don't know. I feel like everybody in the cast was fine for a horror film. There wasn't anybody actually, maybe the other sister, the, the aunt probably be my like least favorite person in the film, mainly because she mumbles a lot. She speaks like kind of quiet and under her breath. Uh, her reactions to things are just kind of muted. Uh, I really needed somebody who was like, I'm gonna get it there, I'm gonna get it. You know, I just needed somebody who's just gonna be the, like, the big, boisterous uh, hero of the moment, and that just never really comes out of her. 
She's just kind of very super cash about it. Um, but yeah, so it's these, it's these three kids and their aunt trying to survive against the mom. And, uh, obviously slowly one by one, them and the other four that live in this apartment building, uh, get picked off. And there's some really creative stuff. I'm not going to tell you how or who lives or how many live or how many die. Um, there's some really creative stuff in, in terms of their deaths in terms of the gore, um, it does the body merging thing that I saw in, in the Thing remake where they, like, put multiple people into one, uh, and that, that happens in here, um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty much, this is pretty much the rest of the film, is them surviving, however, uh, they're kind of dumb, and it kind of made me hate them, um, which was also the problem <laughs> because I just didn't like them. Some of it just didn't make any sense. There are parts of the film where things would happen and there wouldn't be an explanation of how we got around something. Um, first of all, uh, I will say they have massive air con conditioning vents, just massive air conditioning vents to move through. Um, secondly, uh, apparently... Uh, tying somebody down does nothing in this film. Absolutely nothing. I will say it does... I mean, like, to the, I think the ropes disappeared. I have no idea what happened, but there's nothing that's really ever explained because we don't ever see anybody break loose. It's just suddenly somebody who was tied down is just no longer tied down. <laughs> <It's> cool. <laughs> I guess the person who tied them down sucks at tying people down. We'll go with that. Um, the kids never really seem too concerned about finding weapons. That was the thing. Is like the the aunts never. She she's like the leader. She's the adult. And when it's when they've got the mom and they've kicked her out of the apartment for at least for a while. Like they got her out. They got her outside and they they shut the door. So she's out in the hallway. There's never, like, a clamor to go get weapons. There's never, like, find something. Find find a sharp object. It's not the first thought in their mind. You know? It's not, it's not the first thing that they do. Is to start... You know, nobody's ever seen Home Alone. They're not trying to set booby traps. Uh, they can't call for help. There's been... Because of the earthquake, right? So that's supposedly the reason why none of their cell phones work. Um... And, uh, there's also this magic from the Evil Dead that, you know, just occasionally attacks things, makes one of the cell phones kind of melt, uh, at some point, just randomly, just with, just without reason or prime or reason, it just happens. Uh, things just happen in this film, and you just go, yep, this is an Evil Dead film. Things just happen in it. Um, I know people who love this, but I need a little bit more. I just need a little bit more, like, rhyme and reason behind things. Um... I thought the cheese grater sequence, maybe it's really gory when you actually see it, but in terms of audio description, it's so brief. It is so brief. It is so... That has to be the goriest thing, because everybody brought up the cheese grater in their reviews, and when you when it actually happens, it's like, huh, that was it. I thought it was going to be something way worse. Um... No, it was, it was not. It was very brief. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's a weird, it's a very weird film. There are parts of it that are funny. I will say that. It does, but it's not quite as funny as it could have been, considering at least the stuff that I've come in contact with, Army of Darkness and Evil Dead the Musical, both are very aware of the humor. Um, there is a little bit of humor in this, though, I'll be honest. But it's also mixed, it bounces really back and forth immediately with, like, like horror, scary horror, and then, like, comedy. And, like, scary horror and comedy. Sometimes the comedy is just in what she says as, as a possessed person. Um, some of the things are so outlandishly evil and gross and dark that they're almost kind of laughable. Um, and the way she says them, the, the way she delivers her lines as the Deadite is just, uh, I think that's part of the performance. That's part of why it existed. 
the I, like, like I said, the only actor here that maybe I would say didn't give me a lot was the aunt, only because at some point you kind of I kind of was looking at her and I was like, okay, so you're in charge now. You don't feel like somebody who should be in charge. <laughs> you feel like feels like you would be like the supporting person in another movie who gets killed off early. Somehow the supporting person who in a, from that movie is now the lead in this movie and everybody's expected to uh, say like, let's say she's not great at her job also. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. <laughs> she's not great. She's not great at her job. Um, but then again, this is, this is rhyme, and, rhyme and reason gets thrown out the window a lot. Uh, and things just happen, and, uh, man, even at the end, uh, the, the end, the explanation of how we tie into the beginning, uh, involves another stupid person who's never been in a horror movie before, and you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, have you never, ever been in a horror movie before? Have you never seen a horror movie? Have you never, nothing... You have no point of reference. You're just like, mm, what's this scary, gory thing over here? I'm gonna go find out. This looks this looks interesting. Um, movie benefits a lot from there being a wood chipper uh, for really no person, no no reason, rhyme or reason or whatever. There's just a wood chipper in the parking garage, I guess, because they're planning on destroying the building. I don't I don't know. There just there needs to be a wood chipper in this film for because of gore. So they put a wood chipper. Hey, cool. That's what we do in this film. But we just, we have random, really random shit happen to people. So, um, is it fun? I don't know. It depends on what you consider fun to be. There will be some people who will love this. And some people have loved this. And it did really well at the box office. Uh, is it well directed? I'm not going to argue that it's not well directed. Uh, because I think there's a difference between directing and writing. And I think the writing would be more in when I'm like, when I'm not getting an answer to questions, that comes from the screenwriter being like, they don't need that answer. Ah, I got a strike to get to. <laughs> I, I didn't explain that, but man, it's an Evil Dead movie. Who cares? Originally, this movie was developed uh, to be a direct to Max film anyway this and magic mike's last dance both got moved to theatrical so um maybe they thought for a max film they were like yeah this would be fine uh <laughs> i don't know but i uh i i kind, kind of had fun with it um it's kind of predictable uh it's i it's somewhat disappointing in the way that things kind of pan out and where it leaves you, and, and just the lack of explanation with certain things. I feel like it just... I hate to say that I needed more, but some horror films are excellent. Some horror films, they don't explain, but they don't explain, like, one thing. And you just, like, harp on that one thing. Here, I feel like there's 20 things I could make. I could just keep making a list. If I did a spoiler version of this film, it would be way longer than this. So, um, the audio description is... Uh, I'll be honest, pretty fantastic. Um, there's a lot of gore, and it follows all the gore. Uh, thematically, there's the right uh, narrator voice to choose for this. Um, and, yeah, uh, it's, it's, you, you do not miss out on any of the gore. Uh, things happen in this film, people lose body parts, uh, people are killed in not great ways uh and you, you you get all that lots of blood uh lots of spewing of the bodily fluids um lots of creative ways to hurt maim or kill somebody so uh and yeah so i would give the audio description a, a thumbs up um, as far as the grade of the film, I don't know. I feel like last year I watched Barbarian, and there were parts of that where I was like, I don't know. But then there were parts of it where I was like, all right. So I think I gave Barbarian a B. I'm going to go Evil Dead Rise a B. Um, I've seen better horror films. Yes, this is somewhat entertaining, but it can also be incredibly frustrating. It just kind of depends on what you expect and what you want from it. Um, I, I think if you 
if you've seen the internet, I think it's a little overpraised. Um, but uh, considering considering what we sometimes get with horror films, maybe it's not. You know, I mean, maybe there's enough creativity going on here, especially visually, that uh, makes makes it really work. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I have a website, macmovieguy.com. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what has audio description where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who's narrating and working on audio description for your favorite titles. That's it for me. I will review something else and see you guys on the other side. I will rise.